This is a story about the time I was a witness in federal court. I started playing softball when I was five years old. As I grew up, I could never seem to find a position that I could play really well. Looking around at my team, I realized that the one position we didn't really have was pitcher. I knew that being a good pitcher would take a lot of work and training, but it was worth it. When I interviewed my dad, John, he said that he remembers me really wanting to be a pitcher. He recognized me becoming more and more devoted to the game, and he knew that pitching was a position that needed a lot of hard work. So, I decided to be a pitcher. But now what? My dad and I decided that I needed a pitching coach. There were a few in town, but the one who had the most success was Lane Pavey, so she was who I decided to train with. I trained with Lane many times per week, and she became my biggest role model. She was funny and smart and an amazing softball player. What little softball player wouldn't want to be just like that when she grew up? During the winter, Lane would hold large indoor pitching camps at the sportsplex for all of her players so that we could continue to train even though it was cold outside. One winter night, after practice at the sportsplex, she called all of our parents into one of the back offices. We all just stood there and watched through a tiny window, unable to see what she was saying. After all of the parents came out of the room and we got into our cars to leave, my dad told me the news. Lane had been accused of being a part of the outlaw football team's cocaine conspiracy. She promised that she never did the drug or helped sell it. All that she told our parents was that her boyfriend was involved. Little did we know, he was the main supplier. Her long-term boyfriend, Sean Flores, was found to be the head of the ring. When Lane first appeared in court to set her trial date, they did a routine drug test and it came out positive. Because of this, she was jailed until her trial date instead of being out in the community. I was devastated when I heard that she had lied to us about doing the drug. What else had she lied about? I guess it started out by Sean being involved and her just guilty by association. But then, after being around it for so long, she became a part of the dealing and using as well. She was involved in the distribution of over 500 grams of cocaine. I was very upset at her for lying to us and for letting me down since she was my role model. I decided that the best way to get over this was to talk to her. I got her present email and we quickly became pen pals. She told me about her life behind bars and she continued to help me with my everyday issues. As her trial came closer, her family and attorney began looking for witnesses to represent her. My dad was called and asked to be a witness, but he decided that he didn't feel like he knew her well enough, so I volunteered. Her attorney also asked for letters to be sent to the judge to try and convince him that Lane wasn't a bad person, but just made a bad choice. My mom, along with other parents who still believed in her, wrote letters. On the morning of March 5, 2010, I went down to the courthouse with my parents to meet Lane's attorney. I sat down with her and read her the letter I had prepared to read to the court. She told me the, what kind of what to expect, and I felt ready. But then she told me about the prosecuting attorney. I guess he was telling everyone that he was going to make me cry. This made me nervous, but Lane's attorney said that it would be okay for me to cry because then everyone would feel bad for me. I had to sit outside the courtroom with the rest of the witnesses before we were called in. I was super nervous and ready to help, but then someone came out and told us that the judge decided he didn't want to hear the witnesses since he pretty much already made up his mind. As we walked back into the courtroom, I could feel the stares from all the other softball players who were so upset with Lane. And then I saw Lane in her orange outfit, no makeup, no perfectly dyed hair, nothing like what I was used to seeing her as. I sat with my family and broke into tears as the verdict was read. She was sentenced to 20 months in prison and four years on probation. After this, I continued pitching and working hard toward my college softball goals. My dad became my pitching coach and we contact Lane anytime we have questions. I learned a lot of very important life lessons in this experience. Before this, I had always just assumed that everyone in jail or in trouble was a terrible person. I also learned what it feels like when someone you really trust and look up to lets you down. I am not the only one, however, that was changed by this experience. While in prison, Lane used her time to study and learn all sorts of new things. Now, she is out and using her story to help others. Lane has been working really hard to make something out of the rest of her life. She lives in Spokane with her family and attended Eastern Washington University. She got her master's in social work and now works as an MSW at a psychology office in Spokane. Unfortunately, because of her record, she is no longer able to coach softball. But I know she had found something else that she is passionate about, and I couldn't be more excited for her. Created using Powtoon.